Hello Toastmasters. Today I will be evaluating Philip's speech. This is from the advanced mentoring uh, speech. The speech length is five to seven minutes and the purpose of this one is for the member to apply mentoring skills during a long-term mentoring commitment and discuss that. With that, I will hand it to Philip. Philip Williams, Three Life Lessons. Philip Williams. Fellow Toastmasters, our personal lives have changed quite a bit over the last few months, haven't they? Uh, I don't get haircuts anymore. I don't go to the gym anymore. I don't eat out at restaurants. I certainly don't celebrate a birthday by eating a cake that someone has just <laughs> blown all over. <laughs> and as a Toastmasters mentor, I no longer meet with my protege face to face. Small change, but uh, back in November, I was assigned as Genesis's mentor when she joined our club. And at first we were meeting regularly in the HP cafeteria. I was helping her with her first couple speeches, answering any questions she had. We don't do that anymore for a few reasons. Number one, because of COVID, we meet virtually. Number two, that pace, uh, just the sustainability of that, we wouldn't be able to keep up meeting regularly week after week after week or month after month. So things have slowed down a bit. And also because she's grown quite a bit, she's gained a lot of experience. She doesn't really need that much of my help anymore. And what I've noticed is in the process over the last few months, I've gained a lot myself. I've grown, I've learned some lessons. So what I'd like to share with you all today are three lessons that I've taken away from this experience over the last eight months or so of mentoring Genesis. And I'd like to point out that these apply if you're a Toastmasters mentor, I think they also apply if you're a mentor elsewhere, or even if you're not a mentor, if you're a, a manager or a teacher or a parent, a lot of these lessons apply no matter what kind of interpersonal relationships you have. So let's get started. Lesson number one, listen first. Now, when I first was assigned to be Genesis's mentor. She was brand new to Toastmasters. She was a college student. Meanwhile, I've been in my career for a while. I've been a Toastmaster for over a decade. I was thinking, I have so much to teach her, right? I'm gonna fill up our hour long agenda every week with all these things she needs to know about how to pick a speech topic and write a speech and rehearse for a speech and how to, the do's and don'ts of club meeting etiquette and club officer roles and speech contests. There's so much to learn. But what I quickly realized is I needed to first listen to Genesis and find out where she was coming from, what she was interested in. I needed to find out why she joined Toastmasters in the first place. Turned out it's because she wants to become a professional motivational speaker. She wants to grow this as a business. So she really wants to polish, polish those skills. I needed to learn what her weaknesses were. I found out that she is only comfortable giving a speech if she has note cards in her hand. And so that was something that we could work on. So I found out that I, may have, I might have had a hundred things in my head that I wanted to tell her about, but she may have only been interested in two or three of them. And so by focusing on those things, by listening first to what she wanted to know, we could focus on those things. And those are the things that end up sticking. And so uh, the importance of listening first really came through in that process. The second thing that I, that I came away from this uh, experience with was that mentoring is a two-way street. What I mean by that is both parties benefit from the relationship. Now clearly a protege is going to benefit from the wisdom and experience of the mentor, but also the mentor benefits from, uh, from the partnership as well. One way that a mentor often benefits is just the pure sense of satisfaction that you get from helping another person. Another way that most mentors benefit is by getting a fresh perspective. You find out from someone who's brand new to your organization, what their point of view is, what their thoughts are, and you might broaden your, broaden your perspective, learn about things that you had a total blind eye to in the past. Now, personally, one way that I benefited from mentoring Genesis I found out that she is very savvy when it comes to social media. She's actually done some social media consulting on the side in the past, and she offered to do a consultation for our Toastmasters Club. Uh, go in, do a full audit of our website, our Facebook page, our YouTube page, our Instagram, come up with a whole bunch of recommendations for things that we could change or improve. And this didn't just benefit our club, it actually benefited me personally because I, at the time, was our VP of Public Relations. So my whole job was to maintain our social media presence, to make our public image more enticing and more engaging. So Genesis made my job a lot easier. She kind of handed it to me on a silver platter. Here, here's what you need to do. 
And I never would have gotten that benefit if I hadn't been paired up with her as a mentor. So clearly mentoring or, or really any kind of, you know, management, teaching, parenting, it, it's always a two-way street. Both parties gain something from the experience. The third lesson that I took away from this is that sometimes you have to accept no as an answer. Now, the example I give, over the last few months, I've gotten to know Genesis uh, a lot better and kind of understand what she's looking for, what she needs, what opportunities might help her grow. This golden opportunity came along, which was that I was going to be stepping down as vice Pre president of public relations. June 30th, my year long term was ending. And I thought, you know what, Genesis would be a perfect fit for this. She would gain some experience by getting a little more involved with our club, have a little more responsibility and public relations. I mean, she's a shoe in for this job, right? She's got all this social media experience, great interpersonal skills. She could do this job in her sleep. So I approached her with the, with the opportunity to let her know that officer elections were coming up. She sounded genuinely interested and said, you know what, let me think about it for a couple of days and I'll get back to you. I said, fine. Right on time, a couple of days later, she came back and said, you know what, Philip, I'm sorry, but just given the other time commitments I have right now and all the uncertainty with COVID, I really don't think it's going to work for me to take on this role, but thank you for offering it. And at that moment, my initial instinct was to push back, to say, nope, sorry, that's not good enough. You need to challenge yourself. Maybe I didn't explain to you good enough why this is such a great opportunity. You know, really kind of twist her arm and try to get her to take on that role. But I held my tongue because I was thinking, you know what, that, that would probably be overstepping my bounds a little bit. She took the time to think about this. She came up with her answer. I need to respect that. If I were to force her into this, I would be violating the trust that we have spent the last few months building. And so in that situation, no was the right answer. And I think that was a, a valuable takeaway that I took from that experience. In conclusion, to recap the three lessons that I've learned, number one, listen first. Number two, mentoring is a two-way street. Number three, sometimes you have to take no as an answer. I am really grateful for this opportunity that I had to mentor a new member over the last few months. I strongly encourage all of you to take this opportunity when it comes up. Uh, I assume that eventually we'll start getting guests coming back. <laughs> and I know that eventually we're going to start getting new members again. And when we do, we're going to need new mentors. So uh, I strongly encourage you to take on that opportunity. Um, you'll, you'll gain a lot from the experience, just like I did. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much, Philip. That was really good, really great speech. And I love the natural tone that you have. I think the third lesson, uh, I, I'll li listen to that because my, my son's at home right now and has been at home. It's been a long time since we've lived together and I get a lot of no's and I get <laughs> disappointed often. So I'll take that and figure out how to not set expectations for a yes.